you're already familiar with my channel, I'm just a guy that wanted to set up a working wood shop in a two-car garage, and he went about trying to do it. I've done everything around one core tool. That is the Stepcraft M1000 CNC. So we're gonna talk about speeds and fees, and I have something that really gets me excited because when you start to put this stuff together, making things is so much more fun than watching TV, having nothing done at the end of the day, nothing to show for it. Oh, I saw this really cool program. That is just not exciting to me. Making something is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you a couple of the things that I've done and the and how I learned about making the adjustment for speeds and feeds when you're making something. Now, in my last video, I talked about the successes that I had in a few things that I'd made, a couple of lights and a bar, um, an overhead bar to hold my vacuum um, for the CNC machine, and then there was a design element, some holes that I put in, and what I wanted to do was be able to take one of these, stick it in one of the holes, and then attach a action cam to it. Now, because I'm in a small space and I don't have a room for a bunch of, say, Sony or uh, many other brand camera, I've gone exclusively with the Insta360 action cams. I have three of those and then one really small one, all of them capable of shooting from 5K to 1080p. So that's how I do these videos. Everything that I've done is, is in condensed a space as I can. I call this the mini shop with a great big feeling. So one of the things that I just recently made was this is an elevated pad for my computer. My computer is a gamer quality computer and it, it, they all have a habit of overheating if they're set on something flat. So this lifts it up. What I figured out how to do was to go into Vetric and design these two pieces. Then I took a 1 8 inch end mill and I cut it out. I glued them together, put a little varnish on it. Here it is. But I, I learned to become more and more familiar with the Vetric program all the time. Now, this is one of the lesson pieces that I really learned something on. Maybe this camera will show it a little bit better. I went into Etsy and I was looking for a couple of programs or a couple of models to be able to put on a program. Now, I have an idea for this that I'm going to put in another video. People want to know how quickly they can light off a business with a CNC. I think I could show them. So this is going to be part of that in the future. But what I did was I took the model, I put it into Vetric. It was an STL file, and I did the first carving. This was in an old piece of wood that was actually a handrail from a deck that started to get all termite eaten. I had seen something that had been carved out of a termite-eaten piece of wood, and it was beautiful. So I thought, you know, this is a good try. We're going to start with this, and it was a soft wood. Now, I went from a hard wood to a soft wood. We're getting to speeds and feeds. How fast the end mill travels back and forth. Now, as you set it up in Vetric, Vetric doesn't allow you an opportunity to change this speed and feed. I had heard Mark Lindsay. I'm very much a fan of Mark Lindsay and his channel. He does veteran tutorials like no one else I know, and he has a different brand of CNC, and he said, I can change the speed and feed. So if you're going too fast across the wood or too slow across the wood, and most of the experts say that they can tell when they have the, the really right match of speed by listening to the interaction and looking at the wood. Now that's something that's gonna take me a while to really get, but I couldn't even figure out in Stepcraft on the UNC and C system how to do that, if it was possible to be done. Well, I found out it was possible, and the, the person from Stepcraft, he wasn't really just, he just said, yeah, it can be done, uh, we're doing a video on that, but I couldn't find it. So I went into a Facebook group, I tried to figure it out there, I couldn't find it. I went to each one of the web browsers. I started to get kind of frustrated, which is part of learning all this. You don't have the information at your fingertips. And I went to DuckDuckGo. There was the best article, also published by a distributor of Stepcraft, but in Austria. I'm going to put a link down in the program. He literally went to one of the little computer icons in the program and said, 
what you do is you elevate this speed and instead of this traveling at 90 inches per minute, you can double that to 180. Now I played with it, I, I watched the model, I was looking at how deep it was going in relation to the wood, how much I was kicking up and I ended up putting this thing up over 150 and it came out perfectly. This is one of the best carvings that I've done to date. So the link to that article is going to be down in the comments. So anybody that's looking to, that has a new CNC and you're trying to figure out feed rates, um, your plunge rate, in the relation to the bit that you're using, this is by far the best article that I've seen. But you're going to have to read it. So, the education. Mark Lindsay, I already mentioned. I found another source that I'm rather impressed with at first blush. It is called LearnYourCNC.com. I found a couple of their introductory YouTubes with instructions similar to Mark Lindsay's, and I watched them. They were really very good. And then I found out that they have a supportive or more in-depth class. At the time I first saw it, it was $200. They have redone it for the new version of Vetric, the I think it's 11 or 11.5, and they increased the price to $250. I started to think about it. For the amount of frustration and time that I spend, trying to get the best information, maybe I needed to get the veteran and some of the other support that the learnyourcnc.com offers, including a Facebook group where there's a lot more people like me that are really wanting to learn more about the, uh, the software systems that run this and are spending more of their time. I saw one person and he said, I worked in a basically a wood shop environment all day, and then he would come home at five o'clock and work on his CNC till midnight. There are some people that get passionate over this, and I happen to be one of those people. So I was looking for one more thing. Let me find it. Oh, here it is. Oh, and to all those people out there that made a comment about uh, my notes, I keep them, I use them. It's the best habit you can get you will be able to move along more quickly, stay focused, and get more done. So this was something that I started as soon as I got my CNC. I used to be an agent for this agency, and I this was the first one that I carved, and it didn't come out really very good. This was the second one that I carved, and I changed up the bit, and it was like, this is just so, so. You know, some of my friends liked it. They thought this was great, but the detail for the eagle with all of the vectors that are in there, it basically disappears the eagle. In here it says Immigration and Naturalization Service. <laughs> you could not read that. So I started to think, this is probably a two-part tool project. I need to have a laser and I need to have the CNC. The CNC for the relief that really makes this look rich and the laser for the enter eagle that is on the badge and then the wording that is inside this enter circle. I'm really pretty loyal, but I do have some DeWalt, I have some Rigid, I have a Makita, I have some different tools. I'll go to where I think I'm going to get the best tool. I looked at the StepCraft the laser that goes directly onto my CNC system. It was a three watt system. And I'm going to say by my mental calculation, it was going to cost me almost $700 by the time I paid tax and everything on it. And it was a three watt laser. Is YouTube takes and gives us all videos or suggest videos that are within our interspace. I got something for a 10 watt laser. It was made by a company called Makebox. The name of the tool is the X-Tool D1, and it was a 10-watt laser. Well, I watched it. I was really pretty impressed. I saw the quality, and for what you know, most people say is a cheap Chinese tool, it was pretty well made. All steel rollers. It, I, I was impressed. It was, to me, a quality tool, especially when you consider the price. Another video shows up, same manufacturer, same D1, except this time a 20-watt laser. 
I saw a demonstration where they went through a 10 millimeter piece of wood and in one pass, it cut a circle in the wood. That's pretty impressive. Especially if you wanted to get in and engrave something that was very fine and maintain this appearance. Now it's not gonna give you what a CNC is, but you gotta have the right tool for the job. I went over to the Xtool website, I got on, I tried to see if I could order one of their machines, but without the 10 watt laser and the upgrade, just with the 20 watt laser. They're not doing that this time. I think what they're trying to do, because the 20 watt is brand new and going to be introduced, is they want to get everybody that's already bought one of their machines an opportunity to upgrade, especially with supply chain issues and everything right now. I think really what they're trying to be is fair. I went in to look at some of the related sites and I found out they're a manufacturer of what are called STEM toys, educational toys for kids. At one point in time, I went to uh, high school in San Diego and volunteered my services as a videographer to do a robot tournament. It was an impressive event. The kids all had a great time, good, clean fun. I'd support this manufacturer just because they make that kind of tools and support the growth of kids trying to come into the technology that we're all going to. Went over, I got on the chat box. Sorry, they wouldn't sell that to me, as I already said. And I told them, why well, have a YouTube channel? I thought maybe they'd send it to me quicker. <laughs> Who knows? So, because I wanted to use it and I wanted to use my channel, they said, would you mind if I, we reviewed your channel? And I said, no, here's, here's the link. And they said, can we get back to you? Well, they came to me and they offered me a special price on the D1 and an opportunity to get the 20 watt laser. So they even said, if you'd like to do a video, we'll give you an affiliates link. So we're going to have that. I can put the affiliates link down in the comments right now. But as soon as the machine arrives, I'm going to try and pull off something like first I have to set it up and learn the software. The software comes with the machine. The machine to me appears to be highly portable. One of my friends that um, lives very close to me, he's interested in this. I could literally hand him the machine. I have been known to share my tools. Some guys don't do that, and I don't blame them, but why not? It, especially with a little discount that I got, I don't have that much invested, and it is going to be, I think, a phenomenal tool. The other reviews that I saw on it were all very strong. Two final comments. One for, my, um, for one of my followers that said that he thought I was a little bit too positive about it, everything, and, you know, this learning process. I told him, I said, you know, everything's not perfect. My CNC machine's not perfect. The compressor that I bought is not perfect. But at this point in time, I don't feel as though I'm enough of an expert to really disparage any other product. I could be misusing it, not using it properly. I found that when I was putting the end mills in my um, in the collet, I was doing it in a reverse order and my collet wasn't properly seating in the device that um, holds the end mill. The way to do it is to take and put the collet, seat it in the base of, I'm gonna call it the chuck, and then put the end mill in. You also need to allow a small amount of room so that the back of the collet can clamp down. Now I lost uh, end mill that just basically unscrewed and screwed right down into my board and actually went into my part of my vacuum table and tore off one of the little squares. It <laughs> wasn't pleasant. Now I could blame somebody, but really it was a matter of education. If I were running a CNC manufacturing company, what I would do, I would take and gather all of this information together and put it together in tutorials sort of like they're doing at learnyourcnc.com. And I would try to make them more specific to my machines. And then I'd only allow access to the people that bought the machines. That would be the way I'd do it. I think that you could sell a lot more machines that way. But at this point in time for this industry, I don't see that. So I'm off on my way to learnyourcnc.com 
I will share with you what I think of the course, although all of the reviews, and I, I watched a couple of live interviews of the lead instructor, the person that set this up, he is like that. He's got a Facebook group. I'm going to have access to those people. I think that's going to be a winner. If there's any constant theme that I want to give people is try and do something. Don't sit around. There's nothing on TV. Matter of fact, it sounds like the government just wants to tell the news media what to tell us. We're not getting any real truth. Just try something. Make something. This thing could be really cool. When I, when I come up with the a few more things that I have to do with this, I'm going to have another video on very precise steps that I would take if I wanted to use a CNC to make business, to, to make a product in a business, how to do it. Remember, you can do this. Why not try? You go from trying to making proof right here.